In the U.S., an estimated 20 million survivors of child sexual abuse are living with its often devastating consequences for health and well-being. Extensive research lays out the broad health and social impacts of child sexual abuse, harmful, harmful substance abuse, physical and mental illness, subsequent abusive sexual relationships, intimate relationships, and increased risk for imprisonment and sex work, working in the sex industry. Nearly two-thirds of adolescent pregnancies are among girls with histories of sexual abuse. Adolescents who suffered sexual abuse are significantly more likely than their peers to engage in sexual behavior that puts them at risk for HIV and other STDs, sexually transmitted diseases. Among the substance abusing population, 35 to 90 percent of women and 23 to 42 percent of men report a history of sexual abuse. Drug users with a history of sexual abuse are 10 to 15 times more likely to share syringes. Wow. Drug users with a history of sexual abuse are 10 to 15 times more likely to share syringes than their counterparts without histories of child sexual abuse. In 1995, the Giaretto Institute study revealed that one in three sexually abused children become offenders by their teens and adult years, and many more become non-protective parents of children who will be abused. Many more become non-protective parents of children who are then abused. Did everybody catch that one? I emphasize that because it's not only important to get help if you are an adult survivor of childhood sexual abuse for yourself, get help for yourself, but also get help for your children. How can you protect a child when you don't know how, when that was never modeled to you? It's like there's a blind spot that I've even seen, this, this blind spot where they without knowing, actually put their children in situations that put them at risk. The same system of denial that their parents had around their abuse, that blind spot is passed on. It's, and, it's, and it's just so incredibly sad to see another generation abused because the parent did not learn how to protect their child, have no idea how to protect their child, have no idea how to set boundaries, what's appropriate and what isn't sexually appropriate, behavior around a child, what's appropriate and what is not appropriate to expose them to. No boundaries, no limits, just a blind spot, a blind spot. So the cycle of sexual violence and its staggering cost to community health continues generation to generation to generation to generation. Child sexual abuse has a difficult and lasting impact 
and this shows up differently for different people. Survivors experience a wide range of responses to abuse, from severe post-traumatic stress disorder to less permanent forms of pain, stress, and confusion. Even distress and being touched or having our bodies hold memories, they say, of how we were touched. So there are even certain so issues can come up for people who are just, you know, a hand on a thigh, on a shoulder. Just bring that, re-stimulates the whole abuse. Yeah. Even when it's not remembered, when the person doesn't have the memory of the abuse, the touch can still bring up distress and discomfort, even though the person doesn't quite know why. Survivors experience a wide range of responses to the abuse from severe PTS disorder to less permanent forms of pain, stress, and confusion. More specifically, survivors and researchers see struggles including disassociation or checking out. And that's what I mean, that checking out. That checking out can cost your child. It can cause them to then become victims because you're checked out. Feeling isolated, deeply alone, or hypervigilance and difficult and a difficulty or fear of intimacy and closeness with others. Survivors often experience distrust of themselves and others, or an overtrusting shame, anger, grief, betrayal, a sense of losing themselves or being tainted, and low self-esteem. 